Hello and welcome guys. So in the last video, we have created this model architecture. Okay. So here, if you see total parameter in this model exists is 55.52 MB. So if we use this model, let me show you first what exactly I want to say. So first compile this model. I'm writing here, compile the model. First, we have to do this. In this, we have to define the loss function and all. So I'm using here model.compile. Okay. And in this, we have to pass first the optimizer and optimizer. We have already imported here this Adam optimizer. If you're in uh, Mac, then you have to use this dot legacy. And if you're in Windows, then don't use this. Okay. And inside this, I have to pass some learning rate. So I'm passing the learning rate, which is very small value 0 0.0001. And second, uh, second thing I will define the loss function. And here we are uh, dealing with multi-class problems. So I will define here categorical, categorical underscore cross entropy. This is our loss function and matrix on which matrix we are going to evaluate our model. So we are going to evaluate on accuracy matrix. Later we will ev evaluate on some other matrix also. So this is our compilation part. I will execute this. Okay. So after that, what we have to do after that, uh, we will define uh, we will train our model directly so let's write here training model so for training you have to first time recording the history also for later evaluation and uh, plotting the graph so this training history will contain all the history of the model during each epoch. so i'm using here model.fit and i'm passing my x train and second thing will be y train and uh, Apex will be Apex will be 30 I am putting here okay and batch size will be batch size will be 32 and validation split also I want so validation data I will use here not validation split so validation data we have so I will write here X test and Y test so this is all about this training part let's execute this cell and see what we are getting so our training is started so if you see this training speed is very slow so um, why training speed is slow because here we have lots of parameter this 55.52 mb of parameter and if you don't have good amount of gpu then definitely like there will be a possibility that you will face issue in that like gpu full or something why it's because we have lots of total parameter 55.52 mb and it's coming from here this 210 cross 210 okay and if i show you my github repo so this training music genre classifier dot ipynb i've already shared in my github repo here we have used this target shape as 150 cross 150 okay so we are generating the numpy array with shape of 150 cross 150 and later here also we are getting the same number of training example but the shape of that training example is here 150 cross 150 and later we are if we are feeding that training example here then you will see here we are getting 27.4 mb of total parameters and if we train this then for each epoch how much time it's taking it's taking almost 140 146 millisecond for per steps okay and 55 second for each epoch okay here for first epoch it's taking 55 second and 146 milliseconds per step and here also 63 second it's taking for second epoch and let me show you how much time it's taking here let's complete this uh, first epoch first if you want to boost the training speed then you can decrease this uh, target shape earlier here we are using 210 cross 210 210 cross 210 we are using here if i show you here okay so you can do one thing that uh, you can decrease this uh, target shape okay there may be some loss but it's not very big loss because if i show you here this uh, mal spectrogram is taking 128 cross 345 and later this mal spectrogram is taking 128 cross 174 okay so like it's some are like bigger matrix and some are smaller also okay so you have to tune this value you have to tune this target shape and you have to decide that on which target shape i am getting good result and my training speed is also good okay it's not like you have chosen very big target shape and your training is taking longer time okay 
it's also not a good practice okay one epoch is completed let me show you how much time it's taking for each epoch so for first epoch it's taking 248 second okay and 660 millisecond per step it's taking okay and here here it's taking 55 second and 146 milli step per millisecond per step okay so this value is very high it's taking very long time it's i think it's uh, more than twice it's i think four times yeah it's around four times so on uh, this uh, training speed is very slow because of this parameter we have 55.52 MB of parameter. So what I will do, I will reduce this value because we ha I have already done experiment on 150 cross 150 and on this 150 cross 150 shape, I am getting here accurate training accuracy as 98% and validation accuracy as 90.32% which is very good. So what I will do, I will uh, reduce this value from to 150 cross 150 okay and then we will try it again and then we'll see that whether we are able to boost our training speed or not so we have changed this now what we have to do we have to run this entire cell from here okay from this data pre-processing final we have to run this execute we have to execute this entire thing up to here okay so what i am doing i am interrupting this kernel here okay and i am restarting everything so that it will clear my memory i don't want to consider anything okay so this is completed now we'll execute this cell so here we are getting this 150 cross 150 now okay we have changed this target shape so we are getting this and then we'll execute this entire cell we are doing splitting part and then we will do this model part then this thing this entire thing okay okay now let me show you the final total parameter what we are getting now so i am printing this okay so here we are getting this uh, 27.4 mb of uh, total parameters earlier we are getting 55.5 mb something okay so we we have reduced this total parameter because we have reduced this shape this uh, input shape to 150 cross 150 so we are getting this much of total parameter now let's execute this compiling part and now let's execute this training okay so here if you see this uh, we have improved our training speed now it's uh, like it is better than earlier one okay so let's wait for some time it will take around uh, 15 to 20 minutes to train on this 30 epochs okay based on your uh, compute capacity before going to the final result let me show you first how much time it's taking for each epoch earlier it's taking around 660 millisecond per steps and uh, 250 second for each epochs and one more thing so if you want to increase or decrease your training example then you can tune this sampling rate also from here or you can increase this chunk duration if you increase this chunk duration then you will get less training example here but on this uh, 4 second and 2 second we are getting around 90 percent result 90% test set result and 95% training set results that's why we are uh, considering this 4 second and 2 second okay but you can try on some other uh, value of, uh, of chunk duration and overlap duration and you can like you have to modify this function from here you have to tune this value you can also tune the sampling rate okay and uh, this thing also you can tune this target shape and you have to run this and ex uh, perform this load and pre-process of data again and then you have to run this entire cell again and again okay and then you have to see the performance and then if performance is not good then go there and uh, modify that or modify this architecture so basically two things you have to modify either you have to modify this pre-processing part or you have to modify this uh, architecture and after that you have to see your result from here while training okay so if i show you this uh, 163 second it's taking and 434 millisecond per steps it's taking so it's taking longer time i think yeah 
for first step up it's taking time because i think we are continuously running these things i think that's why maybe it's taking longer time but still it is less than whatever we are getting earlier okay and uh, after first epoch we are getting 26 percent of uh, training accuracy and 34 percent of validation accuracy okay so training is completed and uh, we are getting uh, after 30 epochs we are getting around 97.29 percent of training accuracy and uh, validation accuracy we are getting 89.25 percent we are also getting here 90.35 percent sometimes yeah so we can add here one functionality that uh, if we we can stop uh, like we can add early stopping so that it will stop on maximum value like after 90.55 percent there is no increment here accuracy is continuously dropping okay as compared to 90.55 percent so we can add here early stopping after two three or four steps that check uh, next four step if it's not increasing then you can stop it uh, at that place so by adding early stopping you can achieve 90.55 uh, percent of uh, validation accuracy but this is also not bad it's 89.25 uh, percent is also a very good accuracy so we have completed our training part okay and now what we will do now the concern is that we don't want to uh, run this training part again and again because it's a time taking process okay so you want to first you have to save this model and second you have to save this training history i have seen lots of comment in uh, my plant disease playlist and also in uh, fruits and vegetable recognition system playlist that uh, we are facing issue in saving model and uh, h5 file keras file is not working something like that so that's why i have uh, uh, showed here like uh, let me show you my github repo this is music genre this i have already uploaded there so i am using this uh, cell from here okay so you can save your model like this okay and if you are using mac system then you can use this uh, keras uh, keras file format model and if you are using windows machine then you can use this h5 format model i can use h5 format model also in my machine but uh, why i am using this because uh, like here it's uh, recommending me that use h5 uh, keras file format as, as compared to h5 because it's faster in my machine because my arch machine architecture uh, optimizes this and uh, like optimizes the speed of uh, by using this keras file format okay earlier when i'm using windows machine then i'm using this h5 file format sometimes keras uh, doesn't support in uh, windows so that's why i have saved this model in both format if keras is not working for you uh, for you then you can use this h5 file okay so we have successfully uh, run this cell so after running this cell we will get our uh, train model h5 and keras, keras file format model here okay so we got this and uh, also we we need this uh, training history if i print this training history then you will see like this is uh, it's in the form of history we have to do here training history dot history if i do yeah if i uh, uh, hit it then it will give me it will return me a dictionary having keys as a loss and uh, accuracy and validation loss and validation accuracy okay so this dictionary will got but we want to save this history also because we can't run this model every time okay so to save the history part we uh, we have uh, we have to use this cell okay this this entire thing i have talked in detail in my last two playlist okay plant disease and uh, uh, fruits and vegetable playlist i have talked in detail what we are doing here we are basically we are creating one uh, history dot training history dot json file and we are writing whatever uh, we are getting here okay this thing training history dot history we are writing in this file that's it so once we run this also then we will get here uh, this history okay this history will get in json file format if i show you so this is a json file format okay so this uh, training 
tra this loss represent the training loss and this accuracy represent the training accuracy and this val loss is validation loss and val accuracy is validation accuracy we are getting here okay so we have successfully saved our history and model in our local here okay we have successfully saved it here okay now we don't have to repeat this process again and again okay okay so we have completed this entire process so you have to keep monitoring that after 30 epoch you have to complete this thing or if you like if your pc gets sleeped or something like uh, power failure occur then uh, you will lose this information okay your kernel will die and you can't able to run these things because this variable is used to save this model here and training history variable we are using so this model and training history variable we are using which later we are going to use again okay for further like model evaluation and other things we are going to perform later so we need training history and model okay for testing purpose and for model evaluation we need this model that's why we have saved this model and also we have recorded this uh, history in the form of json so that later if we want to use this if i'm closing this uh, if i'm uh, closing this entire thing and again opening tomorrow and the day after tomorrow or some time then what i will do i will simply load this model i will load this history from this json file and i will start my further work okay so that's why it's important to save these two things so i think we have completed this model training part in this video and uh, it's sufficient for this video and in next video we will start model evaluation phase we will do the visualization and before that we will load this model and we will load this json file and then we will start model evaluation and visualization and uh, we will proceed step by step okay in this project okay so i think uh, you have understand that uh, how we are achieving this much of accuracy and what things we have to modify here if we are stuck somewhere if our accuracy is not increasing and if you are you if you are building any other project also then any other audio classification project or anything then you have to follow this procedure to build such a classifier which can identify music genre or any other type of audio if you have 20 class problem 30 class problem then you just have to uh, follow this entire thing and you have to change this class value from here and uh, rest of the computation will be same and uh, some architecture changes is needed like here you have to change the uh, change with the number of classes and uh, and also you have to t tune with this chunk duration tune this chunk duration over lab duration and sometimes you have to tune this thing also target shape so that to boost the performance to boost the training speed okay so i hope you like this video and you got clarity that how you can train a audio classifier how you can build a powerful deep learning model using audio data okay so that's all for this video we will meet in next video thank you guys thanks a lot for watching this video